So now we're joined by a very special guest, Rich, who has created some of the finest work I've seen using our pose and face models to create a whole bunch of interesting web experiments from music generation to virtual avatars. So to kick things off, Rich, who are you? Hi, Jason. Um, thanks for having me on the show. Um, I'm Rich, a designer, creative technologist, web developer, um, and as you can probably tell, I'm a huge fan of VTubers, um, which is why I'm currently in this form. But yeah, I'm happy to share a bunch of my projects that I've been working on. Awesome. So uh, maybe you can tell us more about the demos you've made for us today and why you made them. Yeah. Um, so today we have um, two projects that I've been working on over the past year or so. Uh, one is um, a web theremin um, called Theramix. Um, it was made in celebration of the 100th anniversary um, of the theremin, which is uh, one of the earliest electronic instruments. Um, and <laughs> two, and I mean, you're you're pretty much looking at it right now. Um, I've been working a lot mm -hmm. on a lot of uh, VTuber um, web apps um, that allow you to do real-time motion capture directly in the browser. Wow, that is very, very impressive stuff. I've got a lot of questions to ask about all of that stuff I've just seen. <laughs> Let's start with the theremin, just to kind of go into a bit more detail on how that's actually working. I see you're using two hands there. Um, can you explain a bit more about how they're controlling the sound of the music? Yeah, a theremin kind of works um, by controlling volume and pitch. So the left antenna that you see, that controls volume. So as your hand gets near it, the volume gets louder. On the right side, that's the pitch antenna. So as you get closer to it, it's a higher pitch. And then I also saw in the, the second iteration of this, where the character comes into play as well, um, the kind of interaction slightly changes here. So what's happening in this scene? Yeah, so taking inspiration from this just being a very simplistic instrument, Essentially, all that your hands are doing is controlling sort of X and Y coordinates on a graph. You know, with that note, I'm modifying specific values um, based on those X and Y coordinates. This is a pre-rendered um, MIDI file of Next Color Planet by a, another VTuber. And so what I'm doing here is I'm adjusting the synth's quality, the timbre, the sound of the instrument to sound different, adjusting a, the attack, the delay, the decay, and so forth. Very cool. Um, so you can, you can customize what it is you're varying in, in different situations, which is very nice as well. Cool. So moving on to the, uh, the avatars or VTubers, as, as you call them, um, I must say I, I'm impressed with how lifelike they actually look and behave when you're interacting um, with, with the screen there. And um, maybe you can talk a bit more about how you are controlling these, the different kinds of models involved in, in doing that as well. Yeah, and um, just kind of to kind of give a background, like typically in the VTuber world, uh, there's around two types of uh, models that uh, people would like to stream from. Um, one is is uh, the, a 2D format called Live 2D, um, which is essentially what I'm using right now. It's a, sort of a 2.5D sort of um, animation. And the other one is sort of full 3D tracking. Traditionally in the past, you know, you would have sort of actually mocap suits. Um, right. But more recently nowadays, um, people have just been streaming with limited, limited tracking and just have, um, you know, 
some slight easing here and there to give the illusion that there is, um, you know, uh, more more movement, and more depth <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Interesting. So the main advantage of the 3D version over the 2D is the ability to kind of move the the character's hands kind of kind of with more perspective on the, in, in the Z axes, if you will, and kind of get more variation on that side of things. Yeah, definitely. It's it's definitely a lot more dynamic. Um, you know, being able to sort of, sort of interact with an audience using your hands. The downside is that at least in the current space, um, there isn't quite a, a safety net for um, these types of 3D avatars. So um, you can get some pretty scary results when joints <laughs> don't move in the right way, but uh, yeah. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Sure. So it's still experimental, I guess. But I mean, from what we've seen today, it's working pretty well from what I can tell. And of course, there might be some edge cases there to iron out over time. But considering you're doing this with just a regular webcam and the, the TensorFlow.js models and also the MediaPipe models, that's still very impressive stuff to be able to do that with just such limited hardware resources as well. So uh, amazing job there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so focusing on the face tracking part of this for just a second, can you provide some more details about what's going on there? Yeah, for sure. Um, so let's um, let's just take this unique opportunity to just zoom in on my face. Um, but yeah, so kind of what's happening here is, um, you know, I have to somehow uh, derive uh, blinking sort of eye, eye close, eye open from, let's say, zero to one from a cloud of uh, points that are given back by the, um, the face uh, landmarks detection model. Um, and so what I'm doing here is I'm kind of just setting an arbitrary point or segment um, between two points on the face and then kind of comparing it to others. So um, with regards to the eye blink, um, there's, um, there's a, basically an eye ratio calculator. So how much is open, how much is closed. And then there's definitely a threshold where, um, you know, you might want to blink or um, or wink or or sort of blink um, because um, the model is actually not as accurate. And if you have each eyelid um, operate independently, um, the the eyes won't open and close at the same time. So that's kind of a kind of weird there. Um, and it's the same trick for the for the mouth as well. Um, so um, just sort of comparing ratios um, for the mouth. I'm actually using distances. Um, between the eyes and distances um, um, within the mouth key points as well, just just to give it a little bit. Oh, so the, so the eyes are actually helping to drive the mouth movement. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. That the eyes sort of give it a sort of baseline to 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 sort of ground it at like what is what is uh, what is one and sort of like how to be able to then um, you know. Comparatively, compared to it, yeah. Do things, yeah. Okay, that's cool. And yeah, just looking at this right now, like the the, the mouth accuracy there looks look, looks very on par of when you're talking and the amount of your talking and this kind of stuff. It looks um, surprisingly accurate, actually. That's really really exciting to see. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask as well is that you've got a variety of characters there. So I guess using your system, people can um, import their own models and then it would work with the the kind of rigging you've got set up yeah, already. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I kind of like purposely built these projects the, these these projects actually kind of started um first from the renderer um to see if the models that people typically use live 2d um, for 2d capture uh, vrm for 3d models um if that renderer exists on the web because it's that's um that's definitely a place that um, is not commonly supported um it's something that's more commonly um supported in like unity sdks and stuff like that the story for a Kaleido face with a 2D capture, um, I was actually working, well, not really working with, but I was in close contact with uh, just a single developer that was making an uh, unofficial sort of um, plugin library to to actually render that on the web I easily. Um, yeah. okay. But luckily, the 3D um, the 3D models um, do have official support from the sort of model makers, um, the, the, yeah. the people who sort of own that sort of um, standard, that, that 3D model standard, and they've been maintaining the, the 3D library, which does include 3JS. Sure, very good. And my final question around this area, I guess, is when you were creating this and deploying to the web with TensorFlow.js, what were your biggest challenges in actually making this work? Were there any kind of uh, edge cases that were particularly difficult? 
Yeah, I guess um, probably the biggest, and it's still an ongoing issue, is definitely performance and noise. Um, a lot of a lot of times the um, the noise isn't quite filtered out, and even though there is confidence levels between each, for each key point, it can vary quite drastically and like might not even work. So there is actually heavy easing on a lot of, especially the 3D capture, but um, yeah. even on the 2D capture as well. Um, okay, good to know. And yeah, hopefully this will improve with time, of course. And we've got another number of models coming out in this space. I believe we've just released a MoveNet model, which might be suitable for your 2D capture maybe in the future, which has a lot of less jitter um, in the in the predictions of the key points. And uh, maybe that could be useful at some point uh, for the project as well. So yes, something to continue investigating and researching into, of course. Wonderful. So I'm also curious about what your plans are for the future. How do you see these um, evolving or do you have any new ideas you want to create? I, I guess for the near future, and it might already be in a somewhat a sort of good space for open source, but um, what I plan on doing is sort of taking the calculation portion of um, my app and sort of just making a sort of concise library that kind of wraps everything else. And, you know, I think the greatest limitation with um, apps like this is actually in the renderer. So like, know if we can kind of decouple it from there and then maybe plug in this type of um you know pose capture into other models other platforms um i think there there could be a lot of potential there so i'm excited about um eventually releasing that excellent that sounds very good i look forward to seeing that coming out i'm also interested in um sort of moving a bit away from the pose capture space and maybe exploring some more um, generative ai models there's this one, I think it might be GANs, but I'm not too sure. But um, there's this uh, sort of one model that um, this uh, cool, also VTuber enthusiast has been um, exploring, but he's actually uh, created a model where you can input a single image mm -hmm. and it actually spits out frames that correspond to um, these types of animations. So all okay. you would need is a single image and um, you know, you can pretty much have a full animation. And I so think that could be, be really... like a webcam image of myself and then it'd be transformed into the character in a GAN-like style. Is that what you're getting at? Um, not, not quite right. like that. Okay. Um, you would still need the, the, the art to be sort of in a particular style because that's how it was trained. Okay, yeah. But so. um, this type of animation is actually pretty laborious. You would actually need to separate out each, each layer so the, the hair and everything that moves is a separate layer that is transformed within that program. But, um, you know, being able to sort of take out that friction of creating a model, um, which is another barrier of entry to VTubing, um, is definitely um, a super interesting space to be in. And, you know, it's only going to get easier from here. Well, do tag us when you make something in that space. If you manage to figure that one out, I'm sure everyone will be interested to see how that turns out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, and thanks for having me on. No problems. Um, one final thing before we end here is uh, I'm sure people want to know how to try this for themselves. Uh, how can they actually do this for themselves? Yeah, I mean, all the all the demos are, are web demos. So, you know, feel yeah. free to um, click the links in the description and, um, you know, you know, Perfect. go go wild with the uh, with the theremin or, <laughs> you know, try out the this this um, this version of Kaleido face or the 3D version. Um, they're all they're all fun. Excellent, sounds good. So do check out the description and the link after the show or add a comment to the video as well. And uh, with that, thank you very much for being on the show, Rich. Thank you.